I love doom boxes. I utilize them all the time. I think they're helpful for anyone, but especially for people with ADHD. And I want to tell you how I make them work for me. If you haven't heard of the term doom box, you still know what it is. And I'm willing to bet you have one. Anytime you don't have time or patience to go through a gaggle of items, you might throw them in a bin, basket box, or drawer to be sorted later. That is a doom box. I know that this is an unpopular opinion and that a lot of people have a negative association with doom piles. They just feel like, I can't keep my house together if I have these piles of things all around my house, but that is because most people assume they should be able to keep up with everything all the time. That's not practical. I used to cringe every time I saw my doom boxes around the house, but that's because I had this idea that I had to be a perfect housekeeper. Now I'm more gentle and I use them to my advantage, but the only way to use them to your advantage is to kind of be strategic with it. The number one comment people had when talking about doom boxes is that their boxes sat there forever. They just basically never did anything with them. And that's because you don't have a plan for them. If you don't believe you shouldn't have piles sitting around your house, you will not add cleaning them out to your routine. And while I appreciate the one touch rule where you put everything away immediately without setting it down, it's just not realistic for me most of the time. So I have added cleaning out my doom boxes to my actual cleaning plan. I don't like cleaning out one here and one there. I like to do them all at one time. I just kind of get on a roll. So that is part of my rhythms. But digging deeper, I think the number one reason people have doom piles is because their stuff doesn't have a home. While I do utilize doom boxes, I also want them to be as small as possible. And in order for that to happen, you have to understand why these piles are happening in the first place. If items don't have an obvious and convenient home, they're gonna end up up around the house and in piles and that's okay. I have two categories for the stuff that ends up in piles. It's the stuff that I don't know if it will be useful to me in the future. That stuff goes in a clear plastic box. I put it in my closet. I got on this list for donation pickups. You can Google donation pickup in my area to do the same. They text me every three to four months to see if I have donations. And that's when I'll go through my doom boxes. Any items I haven't looked for during that span of time get donated. The other category is stuff that is useful now. We do use it regularly, but but it's just not ending up in its home all the time. I try to ask myself, how do I make the home more convenient? A good example is phone cords. I ideally wanted them in my room or in the playroom for the kids, and they were always ending up around the downstairs and in my new boxes. Simply coming to grips with the fact that we were charging our devices downstairs a lot, I just made a little spot for the cords, and now they are not all over the place. I know this sounds simplistic and it is, but the reason that we get so worked up about all of this stuff is because we personalize our mess. You are not your mess. I am not my mess. And once you stop personalizing it, you can deal with it logically. I hope this helps. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. I'd love to hear what you think about this. Yesterday, there was sun and there was rain. 